Hey guys, um, today I'm going to walk you through two um, parts. Okay, I'm going to show you how to first set up Chrome so that you can view CSS and SAS files um, directly within Chrome DevTools. Secondly, I'm going to show you how to set up um, Node.js, Grunt, and Live Reload so that you can start editing and getting um, relatively quick feedback right within the browser without reloading the page. So um, the second part is a little more optional. The first port part um, is probably the most helpful. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and dive into source maps. First of all, uh, you want to make sure you pull in the latest changes. I've had to make some slight changes to the, the SAS files, moving them into the static folder, um, and changing it to use Bourbon instead of Compass. You don't need to install Bourbon. You're, you're good to go. Um, just make sure you do run git pull. Then you want to make sure that Chrome is version uh, 29. So if you have 29, you're all set. Um, then we need to go in and change some settings once you've updated Chrome. Um, we're going to go into Chrome Flags. And near the bottom of the page, um, there should be Enable Developer Tools Experiments. Um, you go ahead and make sure you click Enable here. And then you'll be asked to refresh. Uh, or restart Chrome, probably. Then we need to go ahead and start um, tweaking some settings in the developer tools now that we have new options available. Um, in the bottom right corner, you see it says Settings, and this little cog. Go ahead and click that, and you get a whole bunch of new options. First, you want to go down into Experiments and click SAS Style Sheet Debugging. Then go up and go to Rendering. Uh, I'm sorry, Sources. Make sure you click Enable Source Maps. That's the key setting. And if you want to do editing, make sure you click Auto Reload of CSS upon SAS Save. Theoretically, this will make Chrome reload the compiled SAS every time you edit a SAS file from within Chrome. Um, I didn't get that part to work for me, but theoretically it should. OK, so once you go ahead and click those checkboxes, you should be prompted by Chrome to restart the developer tools. Go ahead and do that. Um, OK, uh, the next thing you want to do is probably for you, you want to close Chrome on your computer. We're going to jump into the terminal next. And you'll want to um, make sure you have Ruby installed. If you're on a Mac, you already do. Um, you should have Gems installed. You can just type Gem to see. Um, if you want to sure Gems installed, go ahead and type Gem SAS dash dash pre. And that'll install SAS. Um, version 3.3 um, alpha. So once you've done that, go ahead and type SAS version. And you should see something like this, bleeding edge. Right. OK. Um, right. The next thing you want to do is start up your, uh, your run server for Django. <clears throat> and then in your uh, terminal, you'll want to go back to um, um, so I've installed curbside me in my C directory. Um, you want to navigate to the root of your project and then change directory into the curbside me folder uh, rather than the Android folder. Okay, once you're here, um, oh, sorry, you want to go to the static files. So let's go to static files. Okay, from static files, um, you should be ready to start compiling your, um, your SAS into CSS and having it auto-generate the map file. OK, so you want to copy that um, command, SAS, watch source maps, um, SCSS, and then the SAS file path, and then the CSS file path. And ah, I did it again. Um, I actually did update this command in here. There you go. I forgot to refresh. OK, so it's source map. Sorry, guys. All right, now SAS should be watching for changes. This is basically exactly what Compass Watch was doing, but we're we're doing we're running directly in SAS um, instead of using Compass on top of SAS on top of Ruby. So it's just SAS on top of Ruby. Anyway, um, okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to do the fun part. Um, once you've you've restarted Chrome, you should be good to go. Um, You'll want to um, start by pulling up curbside me. And then you'll need to click somewhere, obviously, where we're using, uh, we're not using Bootstrap, which is CSS, but we're actually using 
um, some of the SAS. And if you look in the right hand side, you should start to see um, this, the, the partial files. And it should have the right line number. You can click on that and you can see the whole SAS file right there, which is awesome. Now you can't, if you make edit, if you edit and make changes here, you won't see them reflected in the document immediately. So um, that's unfortunate. But you can make your changes right here. And then, um, so I set an image max width. I'm going to lower it a lot to 200. Then you can go ahead and um, press Command S. And that'll bring up a Save As dialog. So you can go ahead and save, um, overwrite your file, your, your SAS partial file. Um, Chrome will remember that. And um, oops, SAS is watching, so it'll see that. And then you can just uh, refresh. And you should see, we should see the chain there. It's much smaller. So, so that's already much easier. And you can basically cut out the text editor from your workflow. Um, you can do your editing right here and then just refresh the page. Pretty cool. Um, if you want to take it a step further, um, if that's all you want to do, um, I think you're all set and you can stop watching now. I'm going to keep going for a little bit to tell you how to set up Node.js and get that set up with Grunt so you can have live reload refresh this in the page for you. So that just cuts out the step of clicking refresh. There's a lot of extra dependencies, so I don't know if you want to do that. Um, feel free to just stop right now. Okay, part two. Enough disclaimers. Let's install Node. Um, so just go to nodejs.org, uh, click the Install button, and you should be walked through how to do that. Uh, it's really simple, uh, really, really easy, not hard. I'm not going to waste your time with that. Once you've got it set up, um, you'll want to, you'll need to do some, um, just like virtual Enf uh, has some tools, you're going to need to set up your, your Node.js environment a little bit. So I've set up a lot of the prerequisite files, but what you'll need to do is go into, um, go into your curbside me folder um, underneath the root folder. And um, you'll need to type npm install. And there's a package.json file there that will tell npm which packages you need on your local environment. So um, it should download all those for you. It'll be a lot more than what you've seen here because I already have it set up on my computer. The other thing you need to do is, is install the grunt um, command line program. So it's npm install dash g grunt cli. I'm not going to run that because I've already done that one. Um, when you do that, though, um, you should be able to type grunt right away. Now, what's going on behind the scenes here is that grunt is running on top of um, Node.js. So Node.js is acting as a server. Um, when grunt sees that files have been changed on the file system, especially the SAS files, it will trigger them to be recompiled, just like um, the SAS watch command was doing and Compass was doing for us before. Additionally, because it's a server, it's firing off a server uh, event that is picked up um, in, in the browser. So we need to set up your Chrome um, to have this functionality. So create a new tab, click on the store, and then search for the live reload plugin. And Live Reload is basically just a, an in-browser client that will notice um, whenever uh, Live Reload events have been triggered. And it will refresh the page, but without having you having to click Refresh. It just notices that happening. It's kind of pulling all the time and then refreshes the page for you, which is really cool. Um, so just go ahead and... For me, it's green because I already have it in Chrome. It'll be a blue button that says plus, free, for you. Just click that, and you'll now have a new icon up in the top right. It says Enable Live Reload. Um, all right. Whoops. Nope, that's not what we want. Go back to Curbside Me. Um, and then once you've loaded up this page, and you've got Grunt running in the background, right? It's waiting. Um, you'll want to click... Um, enable Live Reload. And when you do, you'll notice just like my screen here, you've got a black dot in the middle instead of a white white dot. Um, not a great UI, but it, it does tell you that it's connected. So now, um, let's go through this scenario again. 
um, I should be able to come in here and <clears throat> change, for example, the, um, the header height. Um, let's change it to 100. I'm going to go ahead and Command S again. Chrome remembers. It'll save it. Um, Grunt has already noticed that the, the SAS file has changed. It's recompiling it. After that, it'll trigger off a um, live reload event. Done. Done without errors. Reload. And we should see that change here. And we do. I think. I think we did. Let's make sure. Um, No, it looks like it didn't. It didn't quite trigger. Um, we may have to restart the browser to get it to work. Um, but anyway, um, that's that's all I have for you today. Um, thanks, guys.